Welcome to another season of HODA's Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe meet to empower you to succeed. This program is brought to you by Right Career Fit. Listen and learn, and remember to have that very important career conversation with a career professional. A career influencer is a post-secondary professional who informally advises, guides, or counsel uh, students on uh, career development. We have a responsibility in the work that we do, whether it's career development, whether it's another field, to not just, in addition to doing the job that we do, is to give back to the uh, to the field and the industry. <laughs> day life experience is is can be part of your career development should you choose it. Thank you for joining me in Hodes Career Info, your career program where guests from across the globe share career tips and personal stories to help you successfully navigate your career. I am Hoda, your host. I look forward to another season of career chats with international professionals who will inspire you to take your journey to the next level. Our guest today on HODA's Career Info is Dr. Candy Ho. Dr. Candy Ho is an international award-winning career development educator and scholar whose expertise is recognized globally through keynotes and engagements. She is the inaugural assistant professor at the University of the Fraser Valley. In this unique capacity, she teaches courses that help students consider their educational and life experiences and how these experiences can enable them to achieve their short and long-term goals, ultimately helping them design the life they want to live. She is also University Lead Sustainable Development Goals at KPU and teaches in Douglas College's Career Development Practitioner Program. Finally, Candy serves as Chair of CEREC, a Canadian charitable organization that advances education and research in career counseling and career development in order to increase the economic and social well-being of Canadians. Join me and Candy, and together let's listen and learn from her amazing career journey. Thank you, Dr. Candy Ho, for joining me today in HODA's Career Info. I appreciate your time. Uh, particularly now in January we're meeting and I know how busy you are. Thank you for joining me today. Happy New Year, Hoda. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, Candy, right away we're going to get into the questions and my first question to you, uh, like I do with many guests, I ask them to choose one career term. Uh, it can be more than one word that means to you and that really represents the work that you do. And I'd like you, if possible, to define it from your perspective, not the Google search or dictionary uh, perspective if I were to look it up. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be relatively easy because I was just writing about it the other day. Um, it's uh, the term that I'm choosing is career influencer and using it in a post-secondary perspective, uh, career influencer is defined as per my dissertation. So you, you can Google it, but it's by my uh, the definition here. Uh, career influencer is a post-secondary professional who informally advises guides or counsel uh, students on uh, career development. I, I love what you do and I think you are the representative of the Canadian influencers. So uh, I'm very proud of what you're doing. I My next question to you, and it's only because I believe stories matter. When we share our stories, we help others learn from our experiences. Can you tell the audience a little bit about your background and your story that got you to where you are today? and maybe some message embedded within it. Uh, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, I will start by saying that I was born in Hong Kong. Uh, I moved to Canada when I was 10 years old. And, um, you know, career has always played a really important role in, in my family. And look at the way how hard my parents 
have um, both worked um, and, you know, to build a comfortable life for uh, not just me and my two brothers, but for their extended families. And I really admire that um, in both my parents. Um, and uh, I one common thread that runs in my family is that education teaching, helping others have consistently been my fa family in terms of occupational choices and um, both paid and unpaid, to be honest, and serving the communities as well. So naturally, I would fall into something like this. And how it got, um, you know, how I got involved in, in career development, I have to thank um, SFU for that. So I was an undergraduate at SFU looking for volunteer and experiential learning opportunities when the career services office at that time had posted a, a career peer or a bunch of peer positions that are coming up. And so um, you had a choice of like, oh, do you want to be a health promotion peer? Do you want to help with careers? Do you want to help with counseling? Uh, there were a few. And ultimately, I um, got my first choice, which is career, because like any logical student, I would think, hey, maybe by helping others, I could learn something um, as well that that could be beneficial to me. And, you know, that could not be more true. And years later, I'm talking with you about it because it's one of those things where once you once you can see once you see something you can't unsee it and that was the beginning of a uh, life and career long passion um, toward career development and it's still going and it's still going strong and we see it in your position that you've taken on with CEDIC as chair of the board uh, what can you tell us? How did you get to that position? And uh, what can you tell us about your experience with Sarek? Oh, man, it's an it's another like long time ago story. So very, very similarly. Um, and I think maybe through this podcast, we're going to talk a lot about the idea of career influencers in in my life as well. So um, the Sarek started when during my very first semester um, in my doctoral school where Dr. Michelle Pigeon, who was formerly um, a board member of uh, Sarek and, uh, work, and now she's an associate dean of in indigeneity at SFU, Faculty of Education, um, she passed around a flyer to her graduate students and said, hey, I'm involved with this organization. If there's any of you that's interested in doing research related to career development, um, please take a look at this organization. So that flyer, when I opened it, um, had an opportunity to join the graduate engagement, graduate student engagement program, um, the GSEP program, which is still, still here today. Um, um, and uh, I applied with what I thought, you know, like, like it's a, it's a topic that I'm interested in, but you know, what, what do you know when you were in your very first semester as a graduate student in terms of exploring and finalizing your study, right? So I, I applied um, and then I was awarded uh, one of the, the awards across Canada, um, which sent me to my very, very first Connexus uh, where I got to meet the, the CEREC team, um, uh, Riz Ibrahim, the executive director, and then presented on my post uh, poster uh, topic on work integrated learning and how it connects to a um, uh, Fink's framework of significant learning. The poster is still somewhere in my storage room. It's how proud of uh, that moment I was. And then I think uh, the the following year, uh, Connexus, um, I was asked to be the English speaking MC for the conference, uh, and I accepted it. And so it's been again on ongoing journey of going to Connexus, um, being being involved with CEREC by first by joining a committee. Um, so I started in the research committee and then content and learning and then being invited to be part of the board. And I think um, one piece of advice for people that are interested in joining professional associations and, and CEREC, if you're ever interested, um, is to, to immerse yourself with the organization's people, um, be it board members, volunteers, staff and get to learn about what they do and why they're passionate about that organization. Um, and then continuing those conversations and also expressing interest that you are, um, you want to be part of the organization and, and why. Um, I think, you know, we have a responsibility in the work that we do, whether it's career development, whether it's another field to not just in addition to doing the job that we do is to give back to the, uh, to the field and the industry. And so, you know, and 
And, and the thing is, the more you give back, the more you get as a result too, because, you know, it's led me to really interesting journey, really interesting conversations and paths and meeting individuals like you at a Connexus conference, right? So like it's, 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 a, there's a lot of full circle moments in my career journey. And I would say that it's been, um, it's been very fulfilling and I'm looking forward to more. Uh, you gave lots of great advice embedded within your uh, response, and I appreciate that. Uh, one of the things you talked about is someone told you about something. Someone so uh, in in our in our conversation earlier, you talked about finding your own people and mentorship. Uh, who is your um, one of your mentors that you'd like to talk about? And within that, as you I guess as you're telling us about him or her, what qualities do you think a mentor should have? Mm hmm. Um, I want to dedicate this question or maybe slightly embarrass this person, uh, Dr. Chris Magnuson, uh, the two time Dean of uh, Faculty of Education at SFU. Of course, he's done a lot more before that and currently back as the what he likes to call boomerang or interim dean. Um, he was uh, he he still is one of my biggest mentors um, to to date. Um, and um, in a more formal capacity, Capacity, he was my doctoral supervisor um, who has, you know, uh, got me to the finish line and helped me along the way. And there were some ups and downs in, in that journey. Um, and again, kind of like a, you know, history origin story now is um, it all started and we, um, we, we met holy moly, probably more than 10 years ago when he started as um, the Dean of, um, of Education at SFU. And then another mentor have said, oh, have you met the, the new Dean of Education? He's got a specialty in career education and development. Sounds like the two of you to, uh, should be connecting. And then conveniently, um, I was also graduating from my career development practitioner certificate that year, which uh, he was on the, uh, I think, program advisory committee. Um, and so, so we crossed paths at, at that event um, and I uh, booked a meeting with him, you know, a 15 minute conversation that day uh, turned into an hour and a half. And like, that's how amazing and generous Chris is with, um, you know, his expertise, knowledge and always willing to help. And to this day, uh, for some of the things where I needed to ask for endorsement, he's like, no problem. What do you need? Um, so a signs of a great mentor is somebody who will always consistently be in your your corner, believe in your ability, even though there were times when I didn't believe in myself. He's like, you know what? It's not time to give up. Keep going, keep going. And um, I um, I wrote in my SFU uh, student al or alumni profile that um, every single committee meeting with Chris is consistently like, you know, you're at the front seat. You're He's giving a, a keynote and you have front row seats. Um, so, you know, as engaging, inspiring and mind blowing. And at the same time, um, Chris has the most amazing intuition where he just knows when it's time to push, but push in a way that it's positively challenging. So you know that you're always well supported to take those challenges. And I just, I, I cannot believe how lucky I was and I still am to be in, in his circle. Um, and I only hope that, you know, graduate students or people that are seeking mentorship and everybody should have, should find mentorship to, to have someone like a Chris Magnuson. Wow, he, he is an influencer for sure. The way oh, you speak about him just, and definitely someone I uh, would aspire to meet and work with uh, with those qualities for sure. Um, Candy, as I look you up on the internet and uh, Google you, I like to do that with <laughs> the guests before I <laughs> talk to them. Uh, I find you've got your hands in many, many uh, opportunities. Um, and I think you like to th think of yourself as, a, uh, as having a portfolio career. Uh, what do you think about that term? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it from your perspective? Mm -hmm. I think it's a term, portfolio career is becoming more common. Um, I originally thought of the term like, you know, portfolio, like, you know, having a portfolio that you bring to an interview where it accumulates all of your, your experiences that are relevant to the role that you're applying to. Um, the more I uh, find myself in the career development world, the more I educate and teach students about career development, the more I'm of a believer that, you 
you know, everyday life experience is, is, can be part of your career development should you choose it. So um, reflecting on, for example, like I'm going to reflect on uh, this podcast later on what have I learned about myself? What could I do better in future interviews so that I can do even better? And that goes into my portfolio when you sent me a, a video or, or link to this to showcase to, to the world and to, you know, I don't know, future podcasts. I'm, I'm happy where I am. I'm not applying, I'm not going to be applying for any jobs anytime soon, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's a way for you to express yourself in the fullest extent, extent possible. And I look at it in terms of, um, am I doing the things that I enjoy while learning the most that I can at the same time? Um, and am I working with good people? And am I able to contribute? So part of that, um, you know, and and the, I, I think another dimension is that um, you're, I, I like to keep busy. I like to stay out of trouble. So I find the idea of doing multiple things and holding multiple roles at the same time um, to be very appealing. But it just so happens that, um, actually, no, it didn't just so happens. I think I've been really strategic and I'll give myself credit on that in choosing the things that I do. So you'll see that my um, I have a tenure track position at the University of the Fraser Valley as um, associate professor in career capstone at learning. Uh, so that's one. It's complemented with other teaching positions at Kwantlen Poly Polytechnic University um, as in the educational studies department. And then um, I also believe in giving back to the next generation of CDP. So through Douglas College, um, teaching in the career development professionals program, um, and also whenever uh, the opportunity arise, going to um, indigenous communities to helping them train their next generation of career development practitioners. Um, of course, uh, my current chair role and leadership role at Sarek is give also gives me a lot of fulfillment, but I love that um, each role talk with one another because um, the the things that I'm learning from my colleagues at the board at the Connexus conference allow me to become a better educator because I'm always revising my courses with the most um, relevant and most updated material, and I draw insights from working with students, working in my own private practice with clients, and bringing them back. Um, um, to to the career development community because I think you need to be a active practicing practitioner in able in order to really help students understand the importance of career development. So like it's they they all connect with one another and I think that's the beautiful thing of having a portfolio a meaningful portfolio career. And uh, such a role model you are an example of it. Uh, but I like that you highlighted that it's not it's not going to happen by itself. You got to really reflect on it and then put it together in order for it to be successful and uh, fulfilling as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's about, you know, you really doing the reflective work and thinking about what are you most passionate about? What are you, what do you stand for? Like the, the Hamilton, the My Shot song is it's coming back. Like you, it's like, what do you believe in that you will um, bet your life on the line to to fight for? That's really important for you. And for me, it's um, you know, I think about the next generation. I think about my uh, five year old uh, son. What do I want to leave for him um, as as I pass on or as our generation pass on? Um, and I think it's it's. It's the, the foundation of understanding um, career and understanding how um, harnessing the power of your skills, attributes, and experience, and everything that is about you into meaningful work, but doing it in a way that it allows you to live a meaningful life. And I, I, I'm biased. I don't think there's anything more powerful in the world um, that we can do to help an individual realize that. Well, that's very important, right? Whatever uh, role you want, one would like to take is to believe that it is the most powerful position to help others or to be fulfilling. And you definitely have that. And I can sense your passion as you're talking about your work, for sure. Um, Candy, these were all the questions I've had for you today. Uh, was there anything else you would like to wrap up with or something that you wanted to talk about, but I didn't ask you? 
Oh, Hoda, you've been such an amazing interviewer. Thank you. Um, I, I think uh, what I'd like to do is just, to, you know, for if you're career development practitioners or if you're people looking to seek career development advice is to just visit our uh, CEREC website, which is CEREC.ca, uh, C-E-R-I-C.ca. I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time, Candy. Thanks, Hoda. You've been listening to Hoda's Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe join me to empower you to succeed. My guest today on Hoda's Career Info is Dr. Candy Ho. I hope Candy's career advice inspired you to get engaged in your career journey. You can connect with Dr. Candy Ho on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please remember, that you can listen to Hoda's Career Info since it's also dropped as a podcast. To let me know if you are interested in an opportunity to talk about your work, you can send me a direct message on my website, writecareerfit.com, where you can also sign up for my newsletter to stay up to date on the latest episodes. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and follow me on social media for more career info. I am your host, Hoda. And until next time, stay inspired and keep moving forward in constructive ways.